Thanks for tuning in to Talking Point. I'm your host, Neeraj Shah. The case for a chat with our guest today. And <laughs> he's a guest that everybody loves talking to and listening to every single time he comes on air. Well, we ask him whether he's bullish till the budget and the time ahead, or does he believe it'll be a volatile period ahead because of various factors. Uh, are autos at their peak, considering the fact that the portfolios of Helios Capital show that maybe they are underweight autos. I may be wrong, but I'll, we'll ask him about this. And whether financials, which uh, are a consensus overweight, will continue to remain under pressure, or will the coin turn at some point of time in calendar year 24? You would have guessed by now our guest today, Samir Ora, founder and fund manager at Helios Capital. Samir, so good having you. Thanks for taking the time out and speaking to us today. Good morning. And good afternoon to you. So, Samir, uh, would it be a slate of good afternoons from now on until, let's say, the next few months, or could it be a volatile period? So, even if it is volatile, we are taking it that end of two, three months or more, it'll be higher than today, in the sense that I am going into the budget being bullish. So, what are my reasons for feeling bullish on budget? Although there was this feeling that I had before that maybe when the election results are announced, you know, we should rein in some bullishness because whatever news the world is waiting for would have come out. But the thing is that I'm bullish on the budget, A, because Mr. Modi himself keeps saying that we are transformational budget, number one. So if he's saying there's something they will do, which I think will be related to, otherwise it will be a letdown and there was no need for him to use these words again and again. Second is that in the last budget, I mean, this Feb interim budget or whatever, the government said that next year the fiscal deficit target will be reduced to some four point, I think, 5% or something, which looks a bit tough, but at least directionally they will reduce. So if you're going to directionally reduce the deficit, but also make it transformational, that can only happen. That means you can't just cut in the cut the investments of the government or cut subsidies or cut capex because then that is not transformational in any way. So the only way it works is if you want to cut the deficit but have it transformational, which mostly has to do with either big reforms or big spending, that you have to do something to the PSUs. And my guess is you take one or two PSUs and you sell them off completely or announce that you will sell them off completely. And separately, you do some reforms related to some new investment, some new labor policy, something else to be able to justify that label. But forgetting about new things that they do, which normally we find that their impact on the ground takes five years, three years, none of that happens immediately. I think the only way this can be done is by doing whatever it takes to keep the sentiment of the market high and then taking advantage of that to A, privatize one or two PSUs and over time sell some, down some of them into the market so that the investments can be maintained while still cutting or keeping the deficit in check or lowering it as their own investment, as their own guidance or their own plan. Yeah. In, in some sense, Sami, they uh, seem to be walking the talk on a few things. Uh, the, the borrowing numbers that have come out yesterday for Correct. the first half are, are, are very reasonable and conservative, so Correct. to say. Correct. So they are waiting for the, the real budget to happen. And main thing is that if you put all these three things together, nobody asks them today to say that whether the budget is uh, transformational or not. Nobody was voting for them on that basis in the sense, I don't think the uh, the issue in the election this time, first of all, there's no issue now because there is no opposition. But in general, this is all being done because they believe in these things or they want to do these things. And therefore, you won't see one could be that it's a political, uh, not political, it's a, I mean, it's an election thing to say we will do these things, but nobody's asking them on... Uh, you know, a particular expectation because of which the votes will be given to the to the BJP. Therefore, it is being done of their own choice and their own, uh, you know, vision or whatever for the future. And therefore, I think that there's a reasonable chance that from their side, they will attempt a transformational budget. Now, that day we might find that, oh, this is not practical or this is too far into the future. We'll see that day. That's why I'm saying from today, there is no need to fine-tune this 
uh, you know, view on the market that I will be negative in between because it will be volatile because the initial news of election is already known. Let's just go for the budget and decide that day what to do uh, in terms of little bit changing our net. That is all that, you know, we change on these events. Yeah, interesting. We'll have a policy immediately post the uh, election verdict and then the budget as well a bit later on. So it's a co nice confluence of 30 days, which will uh, we, we see a lot of regulatory talk. But that's been, uh, Samir, the, the last one, one and a half months, the regulatory talk, I'm not saying just the government piece, but the regulatory action has kind of been a key disruption for the markets as well. How have you read into a bunch of no, developments? Actually, it's very no? good. First of all, it is good in the sense that they have done whatever, it led to some correction, but at huh. the end of the day, this month has not been bad. Like That's March, true. you know, if I if you look at even the market, it is up some 1% or whatever year to date. I'm sorry, month to date. date. So at the end of the day, the the correction has happened intra-month and maybe some, uh, you know, stocks may have fallen more or less, but basically you've dealt with first round of nervousness related to these things, but uh, handled by the market. Well, so now it doesn't matter. And it's good that some of this uh, release of air from a balloon has happened without disrupting the whole uh, you know, market at a sort of bigger level. So it's actually good that it happened. Okay. Now, I, now we can say that. Yeah. Having seen the, the, <laughs> the, On hindsight, yeah. But, no, but hindsight means that, see, that day, I could have also felt that, you know, I should cut my exposure, reduce my net in my long short fund because I had decided that I am going to do everything now based on budget. Right. Because I'm really betting a little bit more in the sense of uh, uh, saying that the budget will be a key part for the next round of whatever happens. Although broadly, I've always maintained that to, to get 13, 15% type index returns, you don't need every day a new event you can just get that from normal ongoing growth of corporate earnings and everything but still you know you have to say okay what is the next thing we are excited about in life and that was the budget rather than getting confused in between that there was this uh, little bit of pressure on uh, mid and small caps uh, and it, in the end this month is not bad so it's okay yeah okay i want to know the samir arora view on uh, the argument that some people who are bearish make about how there are telltale signs, promoter exits happening in a flurry, valuations looking expensive, so on and so forth, and why, therefore, the markets should come off and not just have a small corrective move. Uh, what is so your... By the, way, by the way, I also feel that the results in April will be not so great in uh, actually two sectors. One is IT, for sure. And one is regular consumer, normal consumer type companies. So in that sense, what is left? Uh, you know, you have to keep doing new things and new sectors and new these things. So big picture, broadly, uh, the next 15, 30 days are not good. But uh, the consumer thing to me doesn't look like anybody can say that therefore the consumer sector in India is dead, which broadly I am saying a little bit for the IT sector. But for the consumer sector, you it's okay, you know, if it corrects a little. That's why I'm saying don't get confused day to day on what might happen in 15, 20 days here or there because it is quite possible that the results in some of these sectors are disappointing. Now, some people may say we have already discounted, we have not discounted. But coming to your question that the correction should be more severe. Why? Because if the world was doing badly and we were doing well, that could have been one reason, but that's not the case. Actually, we are underperforming the world this year. I mean, world means US and all. Second is, one way of looking at it is that if our recent returns are very high, as compared to our, say, 5-10 year result, then you could say recent results are very high, therefore there will be a correction. Just like if you would say that recent, uh, recent performance, or not results, recent performance of the market is very high, therefore it's you know, beyond normal, or you could say the other way around that the recent performance of the market is very bad, therefore it's a good time to invest. Now, you may please check on your system that if you see the last two-year returns of the market, they are very similar to the last five-year returns of the market. Last two-year, which means calendar 22 and calendar 23 combined, combined is less than 15% per annum. 
And that is the same as the last five year type return and the last 15 year type return and the last 20 year type returns, which is in the 15 ish, 14, 13, 15 percent type uh, in rupee terms, annual returns. So, by chance, this time the last two year returns are the same as last five, 10 years. So, you can't get a signal from that. Now, of course, you could say, I won't look at last two years, I will look at last one year. Then, of course, it's much higher. But what I'm saying is normally if you look at it, one reason for 23 being very good was because 22 was very bad. And therefore, if you just do broadly this thing, it doesn't look that you are coming at some great high point, just like it doesn't look that you're coming at some very extraordinarily cheap level. So therefore, it's normal market, which also is a fair market. It's not that every market should be very cheap before you uh, you have to buy. You will get, maybe you don't get re-rating more mostly you will not get and you get the earnings growth and that earnings growth is in the mid teen type range generally so you get that kind of return what is so unreasonable about it mm, okay now just one more question before we take that break uh, and your portfolio allocation shows that you are underweight it but did i hear some or say that it sector is dead well i have been uh, zero weight since 2022 july and underweight since Jan 22. And all my life before that, I have been overweight IT and you know, even ran a big IT fund even in India, one in Asia. So I don't know whether it is dead or not, but it is not doing well. And the, and the issues are more than just, uh, you know, what happened this month and that month kind of thing. It is a serious issue. But broadly, I always believed that the Indian IT companies do not properly guide. And uh, you know, I saw that many times in my life. So I don't listen to them or ask them what it is. I draw my conclusions from the big picture in this case. And the big picture is against IT. And so there are many reasons for that. First is that these Indian IT guys are not hiring themselves. They are not even having the decency to honor on campus recruitment. I mean, how much more? Uh, signal do you want that they don't see the potential. Second is we broadly know that AI, which is getting a lot of investment, what is the true objective of AI? One could be that you are uh, doing things which human beings could not do. Let us say some drug discovery, some new metal discovery for which the accelerated computing is required and AI is required, God knows what is required. But the second is to replace jobs and the replacement jobs and to bring things onshore and near shore and, you know, a fight between different countries and hacking and everything means that one purpose of that AI is to replace jobs. And those jobs that you replace are of people who use computers. It is very difficult, although that is also being tried by doing, say, autonomous driving, that you are trying to replace jobs of people who didn't use a computer. But at the first level, it will be that a computer can replace a job of a person using a computer. And big picture, it has to shrink. And so don't tell me that we have got these cost reduction orders, which have a very different margin profile, very big projects they are announced, but that is you can multiply an order by 15 years and call it a 1 billion order. Or if you multiply by five years, it'll be a 500 million order. And then you can always have in that an option for that company to break it after seven years. They are, they are not going to tell us. All you have to do is if you get a $50 million a year order, you say it's a $1 billion order because it's for 20 years. But between you and the company, there is an exit after eight years. They are not telling us all that. And I don't believe in cost-cutting orders being immediately good. They might be good one day in the end when you cut the costs and you yeah. have, uh, you know, move those guys offshore or whatever you've done with them. But big picture, I don't like it. But the second reason is other sectors are doing well and I have $100. So why should I bother? If nothing else was doing well, I'll be forced to say, is it discounted? Is it not discounted? Has it fallen too much? Now I say, why? First, I should have a reason. And the stocks haven't done so badly. They did badly in my first year of not having them. In the second year, they have done actually well. So they have not hurt me only because some other stocks also did yeah. well. You know, like the Zomato, then HPC, hell, whatever worked for me. So that same money, 
why am I banging my head in a complicated situation? Since many other stocks are doing well and the amount is the same, you put it here or you put it there. So unless it really pains me, I won't. I don't need to go to the stage of analyzing, is it discounted, is it not discounted, will the third quarter be better? Because A, the stocks haven't done badly actually. It's not that I have hugely gained relative to an index, but I don't like it right now. Fair point. Samir, you're clearly overweight financial services. Unless I'm very wrong, the FlexiCap fund allocation, which I'm an investor in, by the way, standard disclaimer, 37% uh, weightage. Um, that's a large weightage for a sector which is trying to perform but not quite able to. Well, thank you very much for investing. I am not the fund manager of that fund, but broadly speaking, we are all overweight in financials at Helios, including my offshore fund. And uh, the number one reason for that is that these stocks are... By the way, this year, they are not doing badly. If you leave out HDFC Bank, or huh. the others are not. State Bank is up some, I think, 17 18%, and ICICI is up some 10 11%. And this is while the market is up 4%. So maybe the... the uh, And even last month, that is... Uh, sorry, this month, HDFC Bank is being up a little bit compared to the market. So broadly speaking, the big picture for financials has always been that they are generally growing uh, much more than the uh, uh, GDP and uh, earnings growth are in the 15-20% type range. And now for this year uh, and for the last one or two years, because they've done badly, the logic has also been that if you think that the market is up a lot and uh, you know you are still getting these stocks at say one and a half, two year old prices, they have definitely underperformed. Their valuations are the lowest that they have been in the last many years. And... I think because of HDFC Bank overhang in the sense that uh, HDFC Bank hasn't done well, it has put other valuations also in check. Uh, separately, there were these issues about regulatory issues in some stocks, but uh, if nothing else, uh, at least we didn't have some of them, we only had Paytm. Uh, that issue is also over and has been absorbed by the performance. So if you look at the the mutual fund in India, whether you look at inception to date or months to date or year to date, it has outperformed the uh, benchmark, it is NSC 500, which is, means it has broadly outperformed 70-80% of the funds or 60% of the funds because not all funds outperform even the benchmark. So big picture, having these has in no way hurt the performance and there are fundamental reasons for supporting it. So again, as we said, there's no reason to rethink or reconsider any of this. Yeah, most certainly, uh, which, which is a fair argument. Okay, Samir, um, uh, no, but I was just wondering that don't don't the question marks around the fact, around the point of potential NIM compression, so on, so forth, uh, bother you? No, they don't. Because, because the stock prices are too high. I mean, too sure, even okay. they're massively underperformed. Second is, even if you look at this year, first of all, obviously, because of all these things, maybe the stocks haven't done well. Hmm. Secondly, if you look at going forward, can we expect a 15, 14% type or even 13% type number from HDFC Bank? For sure, you'll get that, I think. Mm. And not one company in IT. And mostly, other than these new consumer type companies, none of the other guys are growing 15%. Maybe some of them will grow because their margins might go up because of some commodity price cut or something. But broadly... 15% type growth is a valuable number, not for the highest growth stock that you can find, but for a reasonable part of the portfolio, which we call high confidence in reasonable return. You are not expecting every stock to be like these new Somato type companies where you expect that the revenue will go 30-40% per annum for many years. You need both kinds of stocks. And if these uh, financials fit perfectly in our uh, stocks which we call high confidence reasonable return. Once in a while they don't give that return, yeah. like HDFC Bank didn't give last year. But even in 22 it gave, by the way, it outperformed the market by 7% in 22 calendar year, which may be much less than what ICIC and State Bank did, but we have two levels of expectation from a stock. One is you do well relative to your industry, but if nothing else, at least do better than my benchmark. Yeah. Because the objective is to beat the benchmark properly. 
HCRR, a new acronym, if you will. So, I mean, one, 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 one or two last questions, but one last question, more importantly, how do you wrap your head around these new age investments? In the past, you had told me very wisely about how you're avoiding fintechs. Now, I hear Dipinder Goel say that Blinkit might disrupt Zomato, Zomato might not stay. I'm just trying to think, when you think about it from an investing angle, how do you think no, about no. it? First of all, uh, both Zomato and Paytm, we thought we bought at good prices. Zomato, we bought at 52 rupees. Wow. And Paytm at some 510 or 20, this was, you know, whatever, 23, whatever, whenever it was, 22 end or 23, I've forgotten now. Hmm. Whenever these were uh, after the big falls in both the stocks. That Paytm from that price went to 900 odd or I think 1000 or whatever and now it's gone back again. But coming to Zomato, I think I was one of the early ones to realize that uh, uh, A, that the management had changed and was willing to bet on that. And second, that Blinkit is a good thing. People used to talk about the fact that why does anybody need 20 minute delivery and what are these things that you need? And I used to say, it doesn't matter. If you get everything in 20 minutes, does it? it's not that you want it urgently, but if you have it with you in 20 minutes, what is wrong with that? And that um, expansion of the list of things that can be sold without really thinking that it's super urgent because you're buying it, it's coming to you, you're paying the same price. So how does it matter that it comes in 20 minutes rather than scheduling a delivery for next day? And the fact that people would say that, no, the local Kirana guy can do it. And I used to say, what local Kirana guy? If a big company can do it at the same price, uh, they will get better bargaining. They will get better margins from the, the, the manufacturer. They will be open for maybe 20 hours in a day. Whereas the local fellow will open maybe at 10 a.m. 10 a. and shut at 8 p.m. or something. These guys can open at 6 a.m. and be open till maybe 4 a.m. or 3 a.m. Uh, uh, in the night. So these were easy things to do. Now this thing about disruption, all this is management talk. I saw that I every day listen to him say, oh my God, he's disrupting his own. Now the growth is there. Execution is top class. And now even valuations broadly can be justified if you go out a few years and just treat it like a consumer company. But also there is this issue about the fact that if you grow strongly, there is a lot of interest by us and others, not for again the whole portfolio, this part of the portfolio we call the other way around, reasonable confidence in high return. Uh, in the first group, we say high confidence in reasonable return. Our only difference with the world and which has made me survive 20 years with dignity is that I don't have any stock which is high confidence in high return. And people who have high confidence in high return are the ones who mostly blow up. So we, we call the second group reasonable confidence in high return. So it's okay for that category. Lovely acronyms and good investment advice, Samir Arora from you today. Thank you so much for joining us on the Thank last you. day of the financial year. Have a great FI25. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah. No, the pleasure is entirely ours and viewers. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of The Talking Point.